Is she kidding? That wasn't my leg. It was just to get even with you for bumping into me before. Now we're even. Don't be so dramatic, Jamie. That's it. I'm done with these mind games. I just want to tell her off once and for all. But I stop. I did that eight count thing, just like my dad taught me. It helps. Just enough. Like being some weird zen state, I come down. I even start to think this whole thing is ridiculous. I can't argue with Ciela. She's beyond it. And she thinks I'm the baby. I start to walk away. But then, I turn around and crouch down so the others can't hear. They're all staring anyway. Why do you care so much, C? What? You got Maya to cut me out, but if you really want me out, you'd leave me alone. Why don't you? She doesn't answer, but for a split second, I see it. She glances at Anthony, who's staring slack-jawed at us through the corner of her eye. No way. That's when I know talking won't help. And that's when I turn around and walk away, for real this time. Maya. I've never been a real deep thinker, but suddenly everything is crystal clear to me. I'm going home. She looks totally undone. Don't know if I've ever seen her look so cool before, even when she lost her shirt. Wait, Em, you're abandoning me? I'm not your M. C tries to get her cool back. Come on, you don't have to take it personally. This isn't about you, it's about Jamie. Jamie is my best friend, so if it's about both of us. That's it then, Maya. If you leave, don't bother seeing us all summer and don't text. For a second, I panic and think about taking it all back. But how can I? Grace looks torn, just how I felt an hour ago. I hate leaving her, but if she's sticking with Ciela, I have to make a choice. This time, I want to make the right one. Sorry. Bye, guys. I gather my stuff and leave. It feels like 30 huge wet wool blankets were lifted off my body. I walk home with my heavy bag, but I feel lighter than I have in months. Jamie. I'm done. I say bye to the others. Sir and Emmy are sweet and give me a little hug, even though I'm soaping wet. Bye smiles kind of stiffly. She seems torn between liking me and not liking me. I think I get it. I wasn't exactly hanging out with her favorite crowd before. I'm sort of surprised that Emmy and Sarah have been so nice. I'm thankful for that, but also sad. Nothing is the same without my best friend. There'll be no more karaoke nights, no more sleepovers at her house. It's like a piece of me is missing. Suddenly, Anthony jumps me. OMG, stop that. I'm already shaky from the whole Ciela thing. Yeah, what you tried to do anyway? Nothing. Doesn't matter. I just want to go home. Want me to walk you with you? No thanks. Stay and hang out with Tyler. He looks desperate without you. Okay. He starts to head back but stops and turns around. You know, I never really knew why you were friends with Ciela anyway. I get a little defensive. Why? Because she's so pretty and popular. Nah, yeah, because all she cares about herself. She's a phony. You're just you, Jai. That's why I think you're cool. My eyes well up. Jeez, don't cry. I laugh. I won't. I swear. Now go. He pokes me in the arm with his elbow, his goodbye, and jumps back in the pool. Tyler lights up. They start tossing a tennis ball around. I'll leave them to their bromance. I start to walk out, thinking about what Anthony just said. It should have made me feel good, but instead, it makes me feel kinda, sort of, a what? Then it hits me. I race back to Emmy, Sarah, and Brianna. I'm out of breath. Listen, I'm so sorry, you guys. For what? For before today, for talking about people behind their backs and stuff. For being a, uh, a uh, gossip girl. We all look at one another and burst into laughter. I hate that name, but yeah, I did that. I wasn't trying to be mean, I was, I just thought it would be fun. Anyway, I really wasn't any better than Ciela. Total phony.
That's okay, Jamie. Honestly, I didn't really notice. Or care, I guess. I did, and I was pretty mad at these two for letting it slide. She tells me about the time she overheard this. OMG, Quiet Girl's note was insane. Wouldn't you just D-I-E? And this. Did you see her in Dev? Nerd love? But it's okay. Now it is. I'm totally mortified, but she smiles. Genuinely this time. My eyes feel well up again. I say goodbye and head out. It's still hot, but the time I get home, I'm practically dry. Except for the tears. So much for my promise to Anthony. I walk in and go straight past Deb and Alex, who are chugging classics of something neon green. They like science experiments with food, too. I walk right into my mom's office. I don't care if she's working, I need her. I startle our cat, Nacho, who's sleeping at the door. He jumps onto the filing cabinet. What the? Jai, you scared me. At first she's irritated, and then she sees my red eyes. Honey, what's wrong? I break down and tell her all about CLMI and Grace. I've been bottling up so much all day. Heck, all month. It's just a relief to let it all out. My mom doesn't say much at first. Then she inhale exhales a deep, sad sigh. Wow. I'm so, so sorry this happened to you, honey. Unfortunately, this is such a canon thing, common thing at your age. And let me just say from experience, it feels like the end of the world, but it's not. Not by a long shot. Uh, no more relatable tales. Mom, I don't want to back in my day story. The 90s were like a thousand years ago. She starts. I'll let that slide. I do have stories, but I won't go there if you don't want me to. I sniff and nod. Do you want a hug? Her phone rings. You should probably get that. It's probably important. It's not as important as you, Jai. The best thing she's ever said. I go right into her arms, and she gives me a long, powerful mom hug. It feels great. After a minute, I pull away, sniffling. Fine, you can tell me the story now. Maya. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Now, before I change my mind. OMG, this may be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Jamie. I stay with my mom for a while. When she's done talking, I feel better. I even stopped crying. Why don't you get a snack? I think Davy made some kind of smoothie. Um, that's okay. I'm just gonna go upstairs and chill. Dad will be home in a bit. We can go to Ramen's for our pizza later, your favorite. Maybe. I'll even close the door. I start to walk upstairs. A nap sounds good. Hey. I almost fall over from shock. What is she doing here? Can I come in? Maya looks really nervous. I hesitate. Do I really want to see her after everything that happened? Part of me wants to chew her out and slam the door in her face. The other part? Okay. We head up to my room. Is he? He's fine. I close the door behind us. We sit cross-legged on my very messy bed. So what's up? Do you come back to explain away Ciela or something since she can't say sorry herself? No. She looks really uncomfortable. I came, I came to say sorry for me, for doing what I did. We're silent for a while. Well, thanks for warning me about her anyway, at the pool I mean. Yeah, she was totally out of line. More silence, for two girls who usually can't stop talking were pretty pathetic. Maya's eyes get all misty. She finally becomes, well, Maya again and spills out her emotions. You're my best friend and I was stupid. I thought Ciela was mature and I knew every uh, and knew about everything. I thought she was funny, cool and right. But she's not the mature one and I'm not either. I think she did everything out of jealousy, Jai. 
I stare at the pile of dirty laundry on my floor. Is that a spider or a cockroach? I want you to forgive me. It's only been a day. Not even. So what do you want? Is she kidding? It's been more than a day, Maya. I know. She starts crying. But you still gotta forgive me. She cries harder. I don't even know what to feel. I'm still so, so mad at her. But underneath, I think she's sorry. I think she, think she didn't want to do what Ciela told her to. To dump me. But that text? We had a meeting. It still hurts. A lot. I mean, it just happened. Do you really, really mean what you said in those texts? She sniffles. Okay, truth? I didn't at the time. Like I said, I thought Ciela was right about everything. I thought that to be like her, wear the right clothes, show up for boys, have friends who do the same stuff. Well, I thought that was what was cool and mature, you know? But I was wrong, Jai. And TBH, I was scared of losing her as a friend. Stupid, right? She sniffles. For a moment, I say nothing. I just draw spiral designs with my finger on the kilt. What does Grace think? I don't know. I didn't want to talk to her about it. I just missed you. We sit in silence again. But I don't even care about the awkwardness. I'm still mad and don't know what to say. But then I start to think about all the go gossiping and meanness and immaturity I was part of and didn't even realize. And how it affected other kids. Emmy, Brianna, and Sarah all forgave me today. Sure, it wasn't the same. We hardly knew each other. And I didn't dump them through a text. But I still hurt them. And I hoped, really hoped, these new friends would forgive me, would give me another chance. But it's okay. Now it is. We sit quietly for a couple of minutes until I think and she waits. Now both of us are drawing finger circles on my quilt. Finally, I stand up and take a deep breath. Okay, I'll forgive you. You will? Or I think I will, eventually. Oh, I stare at the gross glitter crawling through my laundry. Looks like it built a nest in the camp shirt. I've got to be honest, Em. It's going to take a while. That's okay. I under- Oh! What? She grins so freaking gratefully through her tears. You called me Em. Epilogue. Jamie. It's three months later. Weekend before school starts. I'm celebrating the end of summer break with friends at Romain's. Best pizza on the planet. We'll be going to Tasty's later, too, for ice cream. I feel sorry for all our family members who will have to deal with the after effects. If you would have asked me a year ago how this table would be set up, I would have laughed my head off. So weird, right? Actually, tonight we're missing Bri. She's at a movie with Dev Devar. Maya and I are BFFs again. It was hard at first, like awkward. We got through it, took many, many sleepovers and video dance parties to pull it off, and lots of promises not to break trust again. In fact, Maya was trying so hard to be on my good side, I almost broke it off with her. JK. In the meantime, we got tighter with Emmy, Brian, and Sarah. For me, especially Sarah. She's kind of quiet until you get to know her, and then boom. She can rival me with her blabbermouth. Maya and I don't talk to Grace anymore. That's the only real sad part. She stayed friends with Ciela. Then, when Maya and I went to the pool a couple weeks ago, there they were. Seems they formed a new threesome with Lindsay. That explains why Em was no longer getting texts from her. That's another loss. Although it's probably saved Maya long-term sense of smell. Seeing them at the pool made me glad we're no longer a part of that group. Can you take a little joke, Grace? As my older cousin says, middle school is like a huge bowl of drama soup. 
although I hope to totally prove her wrong this year. She was definitely right about one thing. The last three months of 7th grade felt like 30. It's funny how you think you'd never get over the worst thing that's ever happened to you. And then you realize that the worst thing that's happened to you can turn out to be, well, one of the best things. It may even turn out that you had another best friend all along. Reminding me to thank Nikki Lador for putting a stop to that spitting thing. Madame Z, of all people, walks in. She sees us and waves hello. Teller shouts, bonjour, and we all laugh. The kids at her table all yell, hi, Mrs. Daniels, at once. She grins and waves hello. What's your mom doing here? No idea. Hi, honey. Join me for a minute. Okay. Am I in trouble? My mom sits down with a booth across the table from Madame Z, and I sit next to my mom. The server comes to take her drinks, drink orders while I grow more and more curious. So, uh, what's going on? I didn't know you two knew each other. They look at each other and laugh a little. Honey, do you remember the last day of school when you were upset and we talked? The same day you stayed in my class for a bit before field day? Yeah. Madame Z glances at my mom. Well, afterward, you got me thinking. Maybe I should try and find my old friend, the one I ghosted. It takes me a second. No way. Way. She messaged me, apologized, and explained what happened. I found her on social media through the help of some old high school friends. I wasn't sure if she would, but she forgave me. I never realized how my jokes stung, but in college, another friend confronted me about the same thing. Since then, I've had time to work on myself. I've even written about it. Wow. I guess we both learned some lessons. The details, they were good friends in high school and then had the falling out. Madame Z moved to out of state for college and then a teaching job. Fast forward, Madame Z's kids were grown and she decided to move back. She got the middle school job when Mr. Drake left. And of course, my mom had only met Mr. Drake, not her, early in the year, during parent-teacher conferences. In short, one weird, wild coincidence. Jamie, I want to thank you for helping me jumpstart the idea of making amends. We decided to meet here and tell you. I really wanted to see the look on your face. I go back to my table, shaking my head in wonder. Soon I hear two women chatting and hooting, just like teenagers. At first I'm a little embarrassed, and then I smile. I think about Ciela and Grace. Maybe someday one of them will reach out and say sorry. That'd be nice. If not, I guess that's okay too. In the meantime, I don't think I'll worry too much about it.